Today I've got the Spartan 7 board from Seed Studio and we will do a quick getting started video. Uh, so we will program the FPGA to a just a basic blink. And uh, to program the FPGA we will use the ESP together with the provided uh, libraries that uh, use the micro SD card to read and then load the program to the FPGA. Uh, there's a minor bug to it that uh, as soon as the ESP loads the program, it resets. Uh, this is because there's a return statement missing in the library, so we will add it and fix the bug. So let's get started. For the hardware setup, you have to make sure that the power switch is in the USB position. The shield power is also in the on position and the fifth uh, user switch is also on. So we are at the Seed Studio uh, page of the Spartan board and uh, what we are looking for is the library for the Arduino to program the ESP. And this is right here. So let's download it. Let's unpack this in the libraries folder of the Arduino. Okay, and now let's uh, open up the Arduino. So first we will check the default example, how it works or let's say how it uh, doesn't work exactly as it's supposed to be. Okay, so right here I already got the example. It can be found in the uh, samples and uh, in the Spartan Edge ESP32 boot, so the first one right here. Okay, so now let's uh, select the board. Maybe let's change the speed so it will be a bit faster. And uh, let's just program it. Uh, for the programming, the best method uh, here is to simply unplug the USB first. Now click the boot. And here we have it in the boot mode. So now let's keep it pressed until uh, the programming starts. Okay, so now it's connecting and it's writing. Okay, now it's programmed. So now we can release the switch. Let's get our card here with the program. And uh, let's press reset. So this is the default what you get from the library. So now let's uh, take a look at it and uh, fix the problem. Okay, so now let's get into the library folder and in the source you open up this file where you got all the functions for the programming and uh, loading the bitstream. And at the bottom you can find 
uh, last function that it used and uh, you can see that it's a integer so it has to return a new value and at the bottom of the function you see here there's no return so it will just go into uh, empty flash space so let's add a return here something like return zero this will be fine and let's save it okay so now let's uh, program the board again now let's try uh, a second method to press boot reset release it and now let's keep the boot pressed until it gets programmed so i'm keeping it pressed it is connecting it's writing and it's okay so this time it worked so let's reset and now we got the FPGA programmed now we're resetting on the ESP side so this minor add to the function fix it okay so now let's uh, take a look at the file that we program into the FPGA so now to the files for the FPGA we go into the Vivado and we got a example project here and uh, basically what we got here are two LEDs and also the clock signal and the clock is uh, 100 megahertz so in the pin list we can see uh, the clock is the H H4 pin and those are the two LEDs and uh, we got some differences here uh, comparing to the uh, ISE from Xilinx that we have to specify here at the IO standards for the pins so this was the old version for it and uh, this is the, uh, taken from the example files from the SID studio so in the source file we got uh, a standard uh, blinking behavior I mean process of the M clock and uh, it uh, simply counts uh, 500 uh, milliseconds and then uh, toggles the LED and the other LED is in a fixed state uh, in the low output so it's off all the time uh, so now let's uh, simply switch those LEDs and let's toggle the red one instead of the green one okay let's save it and now for the generation here uh, you can simply go into the generate bitstream and click it two times so it's out of date and let's build it okay so this will take a few minutes okay so the work here is done uh, now let's plug in our sd card and uh, Go to the overlay, let's rename the previous file into something like this. And now let's uh, go to the uh, project folder. Right here. And uh, we are looking for the dot bit file okay 
right here. So let's copy this and rename it to the default. Okay, so now let's uh, get the card into the FPGA and see how it works. Okay, let's get the card inserted and let's reset the ASP. Okay, so it works. Hope you find it useful and see you in the next one.